Okay, welcome everybody. Welcome to our straight out of Haiti Zoom meeting for this evening. I'm so super excited for the what you are going to hear tonight. I had the chance to debrief with the ladies who just returned from Haiti um, from the Great Love Nation team. They just came back on Saturday and I talked to them on Monday for about an hour and um, was completely blown away. And, and it was such a gift and blessing to me to hear from them that I was like, how quickly can we have a big meeting so you can talk to everybody? Um, because all of the things that I felt after my experience of going to Haiti three and a half years ago just rushed back. Plus, it's like seeing it, you know, it's like experiencing Christmas through your kids' eyes, you know, over and over again. Or anytime you're, you're a child experiences something for the first time, it's like, oh my gosh, you get to live it all over again. And, and these ladies just have such interesting perspectives and it was so cool that that every single one of them went on the same trip but yet what they pulled from it and and then what they're going to give to you and and ultimately to the artisans and to their teams and um i told them i see them all as future national executive directors if they want it they can have it because they're all just amazing um up and coming leaders that i really wanted to to give them this space to talk to you tonight because I know you will be completely blessed by the things that they're going to share. Um, the message is going to be overarching, even though there's a lot of different perspectives and things that you're going to hear. The message is, is you're making a difference and um, what you do matters. And I hope that you hear that loud and clear through all of the stories and all the things that they're going to share tonight. They're each going to speak for about three to five minutes. Um, we are missing one team member, Jessica Hill. She's going to have to make a video for us later. Um, so we're going to have eight speakers, and then we'll have time for Q&A at the end. So I do not want to delay. I want to jump right into it. So please, uh, Tracy Warren, you may unmute yourself and uh, take, this, take the floor. So welcome, Tracy. All right, thank you, Erin. Thank you, ladies, for hopping on tonight. My name is Tracy Warren, and I joined Trades of Hope on January the 1st of this year, and am currently um, a lifetime manager in rank. And what I wanted to share with you guys tonight is something that has been one of my many takeaways, but that is that we are, and I've got, like, I've got all these, like, my heart is about to jump out of my chest, not because I'm an inexperienced speaker or because I'm nervous talking to you, but I want so badly for you guys to truly get what we are saying. And there are going to be so many things that these ladies are going to tell you tonight that are just, it's the truth, you know, and obviously we we're not going to just make up stuff, but like, we want to hand this gift to you, you know, like unwrap it and use it and run with it. So the, one of the main things that was just, just an overarching view for me was that we are in the optimal place doing the optimal thing at the optimal time. We have an opportunity with Trades of Hope to do the very, very best thing that I can imagine for these artisans. And that is coming straight from their mouths. Like they are asking us to do more and to continue doing what we're already doing. And they, you know, very vocally don't want a handout. They want a hand up. And that is something that we are blessed with, this amazing opportunity to take care of our own families and our own needs and our own dreams while helping these other people. And, you know, typically I say, I say women, which is, of course, you know, primarily women, but we met some of these amazing guys as well in Haiti. And I am certainly more uh, aware and appreciative of the guy factor in all of this now as well. So one thing that I want everybody to know is that you don't have to be discouraged if you haven't been on a vision trip. Don't be discouraged if it's just not for you and you feel like that is not your thing. Don't be discouraged because we are in the right place right here with an opportunity to do something every single day that truly does matter. And I know that just sounds so cliche, but my eyes, you know, we've, my mom's in town. We've been shopping just like we normally do. You know, this morning we were at Tuesday morning, yesterday we're at Marshall's and I'm standing there and I'm like, you know what? I don't need any of this stuff. My views completely have shifted around how I spend my dollars and I just don't have the desire for it all because you know, my husband was shoe shopping tonight and I'm like, nope, I got my sandals on that benefited somebody, you know, tires on the bottom. And, 
And um, it's, it's just completely eye-opening. And the other piece that really was an eye-opener for me is that I knew that the impact of job creation was strong. I knew that it would make a difference for a woman and help her feed her babies, potentially help her keep her babies. But the extent of that ripple effect really was beneficial for me to learn. And for example, the decrease in domestic abuse goes down. When a, when a woman has a job, she's less likely to be abused. She can leave an abusive situation if that's the case. Many times husbands or live-in boyfriends or whatever will simply stop abusing them when they have a job because that means that they're empowered. The other piece is that when a person has a job, they end up with more dignity in their own country. They're more proud of their country and the impacts that that has is beneficial. So it just goes on and on and on. And um, yeah, it was just completely an overwhelming experience. I've definitely gone through a period this week of really clinging to not be paralyzed and overwhelmed with all of the positive things that have happened, but just like, whoa, how do you process all of this and how do you put it into tangible action steps? But by far, you guys, the sacrifices that we make to work our business are nothing in comparison to what these people go through every single day. So the mindset that we must, it's imperative to me, it's non-negotiable, the mindset that we must adopt is that this is a wonderful opportunity to work. Work is good. Work is, a, is an honor. Work is a privilege. And we have the very best privilege to do work that matters. That's perfect. That's perfect, Tracy. Thank you so, so much for all of that. I, I'm not going to annotate anything. <laughs> I'm just going to pass the baton now to Thekla, who's joining us from Wisconsin. So Thekla, pick it up, girl. You're on. Thank you. Thank Tracy. you. Hi, everyone. What a great way to start this call, Tracy. You've, you've said it all. Um, mm -hmm. So my name is Thekla Bastel. I joined Trades of Hope uh, in June 2016, and my career title is Advanced CE. And what I'm going to talk to you about today is taking it from Tracy, how uh, we are at the right place at the right time. Uh, but in order to empower our artisans, we need more people to join our sisterhood. Um, as I shared on Monday at the call, uh, when I went to Haiti and people would say, have fun, it's going to be so great, have fun. I was, think I was thinking, I'm not going to have fun. I'm going to be sad all the time. I'm going to be crying. And I remember when we had the call with Erin um, during the retreat my question was how to protect yourself not to cry all the time and all that none of that happened none of that happened we were so happy and actually i sometimes look at my pictures now and i'm like too happy <laughs> but we were so happy because of the fact that we have an opportunity to make a change um like tracy said we are here to impact these people's lives in ways that I had never realized before. Uh, Trades of Hope is one of the biggest art uh, partners for both of the Papillon and um, uh, Haiti Design Co. We, with the day that we went to the Haiti Design Co, all of the artisans, 65 to 70, that have full-time jobs there were working on our products. They were working on the Chandler bags and all the other uh, products that we sell from them. And I was amazed, I hadn't realized that. And Chandler said, Without you, I wouldn't have been able to hire these people. Uh, we wouldn't know what to do. And I thought, wow, I hadn't realized that we are so important to them. And Shelly, at the same time, she was saying, that's why she spent three days with us. It was so exciting that we got to, excuse me, to spend three days with her because she, at first, when uh, Gretchen approached her and told her that it was going to be a home party business, she was a bit, oh, what's, you know, we'll see how that goes. But then she realized how when, because she has other vendors that are selling uh, for her, but they're specific. They spend a specific amount of dollars every year because it's just one store. But with that, she said every time a new C joins, a new store opens wherever in the United States that C joins from. So she said, um, that the growth has been huge 
for her business because of what we do. And I really want you to, to take that and, and just be excited about that. At the same time, though, while we were there, we were told that some of the artisans had part-time, had gone to part-time work, not our artisans because of the way we do our business here, but some of the other artisans um, had gone part-time due to the hurricane. For three weeks, nobody visited Haiti and that really impacted her sales. Um, so we asked Shirley, who's the lady who's in command, like first in command after her, what can we do to make those artisans work, work full-time? And she said, well, just double. And I thought to myself, wow, if everybody in Trades of Hope decides to bring one more person on board, all these artisans can work full time. Because what I realized is for them, it's not, it's not whether they're going to sign their kids up to one activity or two activities or whether they're going to, I don't know, what shoes they're going to buy. For them, it's a matter of life and death. And I don't want to be over dramatic about it but it's true it's a matter of life and death it's a matter of whether they're going to feed their kids and not only their kids what we realized is how how compassionate and generous the poor are the shelly was sharing how they don't keep the things to themselves they share with other people um so what i've taken from this trip is how i need to work on my sponsorship and how i felt that i was a little bit selfish not sharing the opportunity excuse me, I'm a bit nervous, um, not sharing the opportunity with people because I felt I bothered them and I, I just was shy. I would share, but if they, I see that they weren't really willing, I'd be okay and not really share, I would say. So that's what I came back with, that we need to grow our teams. And if you're sitting there and you're thinking that that's not for you yet, I, my, we, my, my aim here is not to make you feel guilty for not doing that. I just want to inspire you and help you understand how important it is for our artisans to have more work. And I would like to end with one Haitian proverb that um, it was shared that I absolutely loved. Uh, I, I won't uh, try the, the, the Creole version, uh, but it, what it says is many hands make the load lighter. And if we all try to bring some people into our company, we will make our artisans load much lighter. So thank you very much. My five minutes are up. Thank you, Thakla. That's amazing. Everything that you just said. I can, uh, you guys are just, you're awesome. I knew I picked the right forum for you. Again, I don't need to annotate anything and I'm taking notes. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Um, Denise, uh, she is handing the torch to you. So Denise, welcome to the floor. Thank you so much, Erin. So great to be here. Um, uh, yep, yeah, my name is Denise Rickard. I uh, started with Trace of Hope on September 1st, 2016. And so I've just been at this a little over a, a year. Um, you had this amazing opportunity to um, qualify for the vision trip. And the thing that made the biggest impact on me was our first night with Shelly. She came to the farmhouse and had dinner with us. And, you know, we ate together for a little while. And she just stood up and started to share her heart with us. Um, about what Trades of Hope means to her, how, you know, we come there and she feels like we feel her pain and we, we can really relate to her and what she's trying to do. Um, one thing that really struck me the most was seeing Shelly's love for the poor and her, this deep compassion and burden, you know, that she carries for the poor. And I thought to myself, do I have this kind of love for the poor? And, and it just really touched my soul. And I did not expect this was just an informal dinner. So, and it just, it did, it made me cry. I came back, I thought about that more and more. And, you know, she shared with us how hard it is to live in Haiti. You know, that people, you know, she's not able to give jobs to everyone. She sees women give up their babies every day, and it's relentless. She, she lives with this all the time. And she, she I, and I quote, it says, we can't possibly save everyone. But those we can save, it's just so precious. And that's because of you. Because of us, as compassionate entrepreneurs. And it just toward me. I did not know her thoughts 
to us as compassionate entrepreneurs here at Trades of Hope. So I just want to pass it on to you. You know, she wants to know the impact that we have in our artisans, you know, from their own model. And she wants us to see what she see. And we did, oh, you know, she wants us to see and hear that difference. And we did see and hear that difference. We went to their home. She took us to a community that several of her artisans live in. It was a and I've never had, I've never seen that type of poverty. For sure, this is a bunch of people. They brought us to their home. And, you know, they really wanted us to know, not just there. We went and we sat there and both beat them. You know, this one woman that knocked me and she just, you know, basically wanted to know what we were going to do when we went home so that she could continue to have work. And I was like, well, aren't you kind of sassy? <laughs> but then I thought to myself, you know, that just really speaks to her, you know, her need and just really wanting to know what we were going to do when we went home. And so that made a big um, impression on me. And, you know, I just I kind of see Shelly as a modern day Mother Teresa, and that's not to put her on a pedestal because she does have feet of clay. She, she outlined that in her book, if you guys have an opportunity um, to, to get, read that. But she just, just her love for the place, such an impression. I mean, I really want to carry that through into my business. Yes, um, Aaron's shown that. She told us in there about a story about a woman who, you know, when she really realized how having a job and working for her own money, you know, could buy her own home and um, really helping people out of this poverty mentality. So Erin said in our class today that we don't have to know everything to do this business. And Shelly echo echoed that sentiment. I listened to the video again that I filmed of us that first night. Um, just you know, she had no business background, ladies. She didn't go to Haiti knowing anything about business. And when she teamed up with Gretchen in Trades of Hope, she didn't even know, you know, what a whole you know, what whole thing was. And her and Gretchen just kind of figured that out together. And, you know, that's kind of, I didn't, I was not looking for a direct sales job. I thought I would never do that kind of job. But you know, I'm just realizing that I can do the same. I can do the same as Shelly. I can figure this out as I go along. Um, Shelly, she attributes her success to, her, you know, not to her own efforts, but, and I quote, she says, God has his hand on us because he loves the poor so much that he empowers her to do, you know, what she can do. And she, he sends her help. And that's us. That's trade of hope. That's us as CEs, and so I just want to echo what Thecla and Tracy is saying, is that impact is real, and she really, she really wants us to know that, um, how much we mean to her, and Chandler as well. Chandler's whole holistic approach to, to employment and her artisans there is just impressive, and yeah, it was such a great place to be. And so carrying and sharing this burden with Sherry, uh, with Shelly, um, and all of you is just such a privilege. And um, yeah, I, I just, I know that I wanna do everything that I can my part, you know, to um, do what I can, you know, from where I am, just the little bit of offering that I have and, you know, grow my team and, and share trades of hope with everybody I know. So thanks. Thank you, Denise. Thank you so much. We, we you got a little uh, Max Headroom in the middle. Uh, we couldn't understand just a little bit of it, but we might have to, uh, have you record uh, some of the things that you had written down, but um, but I got you at the beginning, I got you at the end, and that was beautiful. And I think that the the that was not just an advertisement for Shelley's book, but it was great talking to you guys on Monday. And every single one of you were like, and then reading Shelley's book really helped me put it all together. You know, every I think you all said mm -hmm. that that it was like such a good processing tool so if you haven't picked up a copy of no we can hear you fine denise you were just you got a little choppy in the middle i i got 99 percent of it there was just like a little bit a couple people were asking on the chat for something like could you repeat that quote or whatever so we'll we'll get we'll get you um but the shelly and haiti book um i know was it was a tremendous help for these ladies for processing that experience I mean, you know, you, you read the book and you've met the people that are in it. I mean, that's pretty incredible, but I would definitely recommend it for everybody. Um, 
Good. Okay. Yeah. Um, awesome. Thank you so much, Denise. Good job. Denise was nervous. So I told her I'm nervous every time I have to do anything. So it's good though. Um, okay. Karen Redmond, you are up. Hey, I'm Karen Redmond and I'm in that nervous company too. Um, <laughs> my lifetime manager, um, rank is manager and I'm working hard to get back up there to that manager position. Um, it's kind of surreal that we were in Haiti just a week ago and I was sitting with Elfana rolling beads. <laughs> we were in Haiti and um, she was just so emphatic. Um, like Sekla had said earlier and Tracy, they had been feeling the effect of September for us here in the United States. That was so hard with all the events going on. And um, so they had been cut back to part time, a lot of them. And she has three children and um, she was telling me to go back and sell and tell everybody and let them know so she can have full-time work. They want to work. She wants to work six days a week, she said. And so that's affecting them. It's not like us who have a choice and we're not going to go hungry if we're not working our trades of hope business, but they are, you know, so they, they need us to represent them and be their voices. And then the whole time I was there in Haiti, although it was about them and all the senses and sights and sounds, and we were seeing the extreme poverty around us, um, just the whole time I was there, though, I kept thinking how this is magnified with our artisans. Um, this isn't just Haiti. This is India and Pakistan and Thailand and um, just all we're doing for them, being, being their voice and representing them here. And I just wanted to bring it back and do it well. And this was just such a pivotal point in my business because I have been doing this since April of 2015, two and a half years now. And so I kind of felt like I was just spinning my wheels lately and not really being as productive as I could. And um, so I really just wanted to dig in when I was in Haiti and come back and I see where I need to do things differently. I just need to get back to some basics. I need to find a balance because I don't want to be getting burned out. I want to be in it for the long haul. And um, this is long term. It's not an option to quit. So I want to be able to make my efforts count, get back to my power hours, um, my six most important things, all the tools they give us in our back office are incredible. Just pull some of those out again that I was doing in the beginning when I was building um, so much and get back and build more for our artisans. And it's just so important um, to be able to do that. And People that don't get to go on a vision trip, we have such an amazing company that brings vision trips to us. I mean, my heart was lit on fire the very first retreat I went to. And so if you don't have your Inspire ticket, you need to get that right now because that's a field trip to us for our artisans. And I can't imagine their culture shop coming here after all our activities. And um, so get, get those. And that's the first time I met Shelly. Um, read her book. It's so incredible. But she brought two of our artisans to the very first fearless retreat that I went to. And it was incredible um, to hear their stories firsthand. You can go experience it firsthand on a vision trip. That's amazing. But you also get that firsthand from them at our retreats. And that's an amazing tool that our founders give us. And um, not just Shelly, but this morning I was reading um, Becca Stevens' Love Heals. And it so parallels the founders of our company, starting with four women and then having an army of us going out there and representing our artisans with Shelly, starting with just four women in, in Haiti and some boys doing beads. And it's grown up to over, you know, about 300 employees there who are able to feed their children and have, build homes and buy property and um, have big dignity and hope. That's what we saw most down there was that hope. It was incredible. Just the change that's taken place. And so in Love Heals, it was the same thing when Thistle Farms came to Empower in Nashville. And uh, Katrina spoke at the manager's meeting that night and told how we're one of her biggest marketers, Trades of Hope is, and um, that she started again with just five women. And she has 1,700 women globally now um, that are helped with, with what we do. And so... Just don't quit and be intentional and, you know, find those times, get the balance and, and keep it going for the long haul, I guess, is what I came back with from all of that. So, oh, and don't forget Katie Davis, too, another one of our <laughs> partners. 
So and go oh, to quickly, Inspire. This is turning into a commercial. Yes, get your for Inspire. <laughs> by the That's book. why we love our artisans. I know. No, you're right. And you're and you're and what you're really saying is feed your fire. That you know, that's what I meant. Like on Monday when when you guys spoke to me, I mean I'm coming on five years of doing this work and I need my my tank filled and you guys filled it up for me. And when I when I need that, I go seek it because the commitment is not going anywhere but everybody needs needs your tank filled and 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 even when i was at the very beginning reading some good books and just understanding trying to wrap your head around what we're doing um it's a journey and it's a process and i do somebody said on the chat thanks for you know being being so real and honest and that's that's who you are karen and i, re I really appreciate that and and you just made a lot of really, really good points and probably sold a bunch of more books for, uh, for Katie and uh, sold some Inspire tickets. So that's awesome. Okay, um, Mitzi, beautiful Mitzi, it is, it is your turn, my dear. Hey, hi, my name is Mitzi Galuli. I am a lead CE for my lifetime rank. Um, so I joined on Day of Hope um, in 2016. And I guess the first thing that I wanted to say about how I felt is I wanted to go to Haiti with no expectations because I too thought that I was going to go and just cry. And so I wanted to go and find the joy in everything. And so the first joy that I found was in our CE sisters. And it almost makes me want to cry because I am so happy to see all of their faces here and I miss them so much. I really felt like I could be myself around each and every one of them and they all helped me grow in ways that I just haven't had in girlfriends in a very, very long time. So that was truly amazing. It was like a big slumber party the whole week. And um, so the next thing that really got me was um, we were at Papillon and um, the four of us were sitting around and this is when I really realized the impact that we're making because we were told that the Haitians are they're not very um, easy to let you know their feelings and talk to you about things and so we had a translator with us and we were able to um, ask questions so we were asking if they had children we asked you know uh, what they did before um, how long they had been there. And so then um, Stacy had said to one of the artisans that, um, I believe it was Verna, she said to her that, you know, we're partners. You know, you, we work for you at home and so that you can feed your children, but, you know, your work helps us to feed our children and do things for our families. And this woman laid her head down on the table and started to cry. And so, of course, we all have tears rolling down our faces, and it just really, we are making such an amazing impact for these people to be able to live and to thrive, and they take such pride in that, and so it just really, um, it gives me chills every time I talk about it, every time I think about it, because I just know that I want to every day share it with anybody that will allow me to because you know like like Tracy said you know when we go shopping like I Andy wanted to go get a pair of shoes when we got home and I walked in there and there was rows and rows of shoes at DSW and I thought what do we need all this for so um, so yeah and then one more story um, that I just wanted to share when we went to Haiti design is that I sat and talked with Kassan for a very long time outside and she was so much fun and that they are just like you and me and they have dreams and they you know want to have amazing things in their life just like you and me so she was asking me what I do here at home which I didn't think those would be questions that I was asked and so it was so neat to share we were showing each other pictures of our children on our phones and she asked me to be Facebook friends with her and I just thought wow like it's not all heartache there yes it may be hard and that life is all they know but you know the, it, what we're offering them is so amazing so be available that's another thing I learned. be available because if we are available and intentional in everything that we do for the artisans 
you know, I thought I was going to go there and empower these women and I came home empowered. So I just want to share. And that's what I learned while I was away. <laughs> that's it. I said, I, I said, thank you. And then I said, I can't stop looking at how beautiful you are. I'm just mesmerized by your makeup right now. Uh, <laughs> gorgeous. No, you're gorgeous. You're beautiful. And I love that you shared about the sisterhood because that's an element of the trip that I think people kind of don't realize and, um, and is so powerful and significant. And so thank you for sharing that. And, um, yeah, and I put about Kassan for people that didn't know who she is. But um, yeah, that's that was perfect. Thank you, Mitzi. Um, Kelly Wilding, it is your turn. Where are you, Kelly? Can you unmute yourself? I'm looking. Can you hear me? Yes. Hey. Aaron. Yep. Okay. Mitzi, you have me crying. Oh, no. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. We can't see you, but okay. we'll, we'll go with okay. you. Um, so what I wanted to share about was on the first night, um, or not the first night, but the first full day that we had, that we went to church and then we had lunch at the Clay Cafe and then we went on a walk and that walk really impacted me um, a lot. Shelly had taken us through an area called Clareville that she also talks about in her book that it's an area where a lot of our artisans live and where some of them lived before they were able to build a house and move from that area. But I've I guess here at home, I've had my view of what poverty looks like and what it is. And when we went on this walk, um, it was just a pivotal moment for me to understand what true poverty looks like and um, how really unimaginable it is. I felt like we were walking through there and that I was looking at men and women and children and animals that were living in circumstances that nobody should ever have to live in um and it broke my heart you know and they had to, they had told us that beforehand what we were going to see was going to be hard and you know don't cry and i'm a crier so that was really hard for me but um as we walked through this area one of our artisans had invited us to come in and we were rotating getting in her home because we couldn't all fit in there. And um, the sweet lady had, you know, her and her husband and four children. So there were six of them that were living in a home that I feel like was probably like the size of my garage or smaller. And there was one mattress on the floor and it was maybe a full size mattress. And so the, my heart was just crushed and broke and thinking that I've, and I forgot to say that I've been a CE since May of 2014, and my lifetime rank is a master CE. And I was at Erin's meeting when she first came back from Haiti and um, talked about her experience and her story. And, um, you know, my heart's loved the people of Haiti ever since. And so it's been a prayer for me to go to Haiti and to experience all of this firsthand. Um, so I just really took everything in. But on that walk, I thought, you know, even though I've been a CE for three years, and even though I thought I really understood the situation that our artisans are in, and I thought I really understood the impact we were having, I realized in that moment that I that I didn't understand. And um, we walked back. And when we got back to the farmhouse, I just sat on my bunk bed and just cried. because. Um, I felt like my heart couldn't take what, what I had just seen. And I didn't feel like it was fair for anybody, no matter who they are, to ever live in those kind of circumstances. Um, so that night I was feeling like a little bit um, 
helpless and hopeless, I guess you could say. And the next day is when the hope really started in for me. Like we went to Papillon the next day and worked with the artisans. And I was sitting at the same table for our first group that Mitzi was at when she shared the story about the lady laying her head down and crying about the partnership we have and understanding what that truly means. And I felt like in that moment that these four women who were sitting with us, like they understood that we weren't there to give them charity. We didn't look at them any less than ourselves. We just considered them our partners and our friends. And I think that meant so much to them. Um, But I really made a point that day to be really, um, I, I really wanted to ask them questions so that I could know that what we are doing is making a difference. And so, like Mitzi said, we're asking, you know, about their children and if they're able to send their children to school. And that lady that had laid her head down crying that was next to me, I had asked her before that, you know, how many children she had and if she sends them to school. And she is able to send all of them to school. She had also told us that she is the mother and father because there is no father that is present. Um, in her children's lives. And she was also begging us to, these two women at this table, they weren't just asking us, they were like begging us to please, please tell everybody about the jewelry we make. Please tell everybody about us because we need more work. And, you know, that lady told us, I'm the mother and the father. My children only have me to take care of them. And so um, then when we go to our next station and I'm talking to one of the artisans that's on the front of Shelly's book. She was so happy and joyful. And um, I was talking to her about her children and she was saying how she has four children and she's able to send all of them to school. And so then I thought, I'm going to go a step further. Like, you know, some of these ladies have told us they send their children to school. They are able to obviously keep their children and feed them. And so that's great. But I thought I'm going to go a step further and see like what this whole having a job really does for them. And I wanted to see, does she think past today? And so I asked her, um, you know, what do you dream of? What do you think of? Do you think, what do you think of your life in three years or five years? And she told me that now that she's able to send her kids to school, that she has started setting money aside and her plan is to, in the next couple of years, to build a house. And so I just, the more I talked to the artisans and I, the more that I felt their joy and their happiness and their love for their work and us wanting to share it with everybody, I felt like we are creating hope and we are giving them so much that they would never have if they didn't have this job and this opportunity. And um, more than anything, I just felt like that, wow, I haven't been doing enough and I I have a responsibility to um, continue to be a voice for these women and a responsibility to tell people about the work that they're doing because for them, it is it isn't just a job. They can't just go get a job somewhere else because um, jobs are very hard to come by there. So, and I'm sure that's like that with a lot of our artisan groups we work with. And being that they're getting paid a fair wage, then um, they can actually support themselves and support their families. So, I just now I I carry both things with me. I I'm always going to co- hold very close to my heart how I felt when I took that walk and I'm all, I'm also going to hold the hope close to my heart because I know that if they don't have that job and if we don't get other people working to have that job, I know that for them it is life and death and it is the choice between keeping your child or sending your child to an orphanage. And um, so I just want to encourage everybody that the impact you're making is so huge and it's, it matters so much more than I thought it ever mattered. And um, these people deserve to be loved. They deserve to have a job and we are their voice and we're the ones that are going to continue to create jobs. And so I did also feel like um, something I said in one of our groups one night is that we always say we're storytellers and we are storytellers, but I said, you know, I think we also need to just see ourselves as educators. Also, we need to just start educating people about, what this poverty that our artisans live in is actually like and the fact that 
um, their life is so much different because they have their job and, and they're able to support themselves and support their family. They're able to dream and they're able to educate their children. And so now their children are the future and they're the future of Haiti. And um, I just think that's really amazing. So I just love the way that everything just for me came full circle of understanding the impact that we truly have. That's it. Thank you, Kelly. Oh my gosh. Gosh, you guys, Kelly has been with me, like she said, since I got back from Haiti three and a half years ago. I mean, she joined in May of 2004, or May of 2014? Yeah. Yeah? I mean, yeah. that's the month I went to Haiti. Like, Kelly was there when my team had 10 people on it. Like, Kelly came to our first team meeting and it was at Panera and there were 10 of us sitting around the table. And that, that was a long time ago. And she's been a consistent, committed, compassionate entrepreneur has moved away. She moved from Florida to um, Missouri, Missouri, Missouri. Um, yeah. yeah, that sounded wrong for some reason. I want to say Minnesota. Um, but you just told the most beautiful story of, of what it is, what it's all about, that redemption. And I, I think it's kind of amazing how the trip, it's like it, they do it on purpose. Like they kind of showed you the, the despair, but then they showed you how we're making it better. And I'm so thankful that you got to go on this trip, Kelly, because um, you were obviously meant to be there. And thank you for hanging with me for all these years. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it took a little while. Thank you. There, obviously, it was the right time and the right group and the right place. And uh, I said before that I felt like this group was kind of ordained. And um, I'm just really thankful for you, Kelly. So thank you for sharing that. That was beautiful. I'm uh, thankful for you. And I'm, I'm thankful for every woman that's on this call and the ones that are going to listen to the recording because every person is making an impact and making a difference. So 100%. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, okay, Amy. Amy's been a little under the weather, but she made it. And uh, so, Amy, you made, I made it. I, I carried a Haiti bug home with me, but I have my Papillon <laughs> mug with me. Hi, guys. I'm Amy Caton, and my lifetime rank is manager. And um, how am I supposed to follow up after Kelly, Miss Hart? I mean, that's. I just feel like. If any of you were on there, I feel like this company draws people with a heart. And so I just, I'm so thankful to be here. I will try not to cry because I don't pretty cry like these other people do. <laughs> um, so one thing I wanted to say, just kind of to follow up with what Thecla said about Shelly, just talking about the impact of Trees of Hope. Um, just the word stuck in my mind. She said, you know, she, she was like, home parties, what are they? Um, direct sales, yeah, okay, whatever. And then once we started, uh, once she started working with Trades of Hope and realized, whoa, and so she, the words like that just stick in my head is exponential growth. And she said, just like one store places one order, but she has just seen the exponential growth and she could not like reiterate that enough, how like it was shocking and it's huge. And for me, like I joined Trades of Hope, I believe in the mission. You know, I swore that I would never join a direct sales company, and probably most of you were that same way. I've, I've taken, yeah, I mean, yeah. And so, and I know that, like, when I went to um, Inspire Conference and I heard um, Fabi and Fabian speak and Pastor Daniel speak from India, like, I felt the same way. Like, um, I'm not going to apologize anymore for, for asking someone to host a party. Like, this is a big deal. I got it. And, and so I do encourage you guys to check out a conference for sure. But um, that was just reiterated on this trip for sure. Like there's no more apologies. This is amazing. What is happening here is incredible. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's one big thing. But one thing, um, just like visiting the different artisan groups, we started with Papillon, Shelley's group, and it's very vibrant. There's a lot of people there. Probably, I think she said 250 to 275, depending on sometimes part-time, part-timers can't come. So it's loud and fun and just like, you know, busy. There's a lot of stations and different things. And so then I think you ladies can agree who went with me. Um, we went to Haiti Design Co. the next day and I just call it complete zen. It was just like so chill. 
um, everyone was there, they're working. I mean, everyone's talking, but it was like, um, both, by the way, both groups are doing incredible things to just lift people up. Like both of their goals are to like better themselves, like have their artisans better themselves, English classes, um, wellness, um, financial classes, all these things. It's so, so cool. So just one thing I wanted to share with you that impacted me, especially as I was talking Monday and bawling my eyes out on the Monday call, um, was we got a lot of time to spend with these artisans, especially at Chandler's group. It was smaller. And so we had a lot more downtime. And so I actually was talking with one of the guys. His name was Jerry. And he's probably like mid-20s, late-20s. I need to take a sip. Sorry, hold on. Okay, so... He was there, and he was he was newly married to a lady named Gertie, who we'll talk about here in a, in a minute too. Um, and they're both like leaders now in this in this artisan group and doing amazing things. So I'm talking to them, we're like having snacks or something, and he was just like talking about her. And so we were just asking about things, and I realized she has a daughter that's my age. Wow, that's really really cool. And then. He, he said that he was the younger man, like she was older than him. I'm like, wait a minute, that's like me and my husband, because I'm a little older than he is. Not too much older, but you know. <laughs> and so, and just all these things start having in common. And I, I just, this is what I'm trying not to cry. We're the same. We're the same. And so, Jerry, he was sharing how um, he's worked really hard and saved for many years uh, to buy a house. And I was just thought of my husband and how hard he works, you know. And um, so they bought the house, and they, they bought it out in the countryside. So they, they take a two- to three-hour tap-tap ride, two tap-taps. They jump on one and jump on the other to work every morning. So they wake up at 4 a.m., so it's a shorter commute. Um, and I just was like, I'm done. I'm, I'm toast. I, I, like, I just felt like they became family. We all were talking. and. They just, like, seriously, when I got there, another guy named Jeff, who was helping us with some other um, things that we make, he seriously grabbed my hand for this picture. All of us just grabbed hands. Do you girls remember that? I'm like, we're partners. It was just amazing. And just to see, um, like, Jerry saying he did not eat at night while he was saving for his house. I mean, just the difference of life being hard and life being hard. It's just... But anyway, so I, I want to leave with this, like, at the end, I was just reflecting, and we were talking the last night of the trip, and just thinking, like, we saw Clareville, the place where, I mean, straight up, walking over trash, seeing starving dogs, and, you know, just children who were still children, beautiful, and happy, um, and, and incredible people, so strong, and then we saw the artisan groups, and we saw the hope, we saw how this is changing lives. We saw people so proud to send their kids to school and they're like, four, I've got four, you know, and four going to school. And then, and then the last day to go to Three Angels School and Orphanage. And that's where, which reads of hope, we have the Gifts of Hope program and we give back to many things. And this is one place. It's actually where our founder, one of our founders, Gretchen, she, she started that before Trades of Hope. And just to see the future of Haiti, and Gretchen spoke to him actually and just saying, you are the future of Haiti. And so it's not like we're taking these children away from Haiti or thing. You know, it's just like we're empowering people for where they are, no matter where they are. We're empowering people in India to be in India. We're empowering people in America here to be just where you are. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean that. So I have friends who are like, oh, you're going to be a mess when you come home. And yeah, I kind of am a mess, kind of messed up. but. Um, I am empowered. I have action steps. Like if I didn't have action steps, I'd be a mess right now. I have action steps and I'm super, super excited. And as soon as I get over this bug, which tonight I'm getting better, I'm on the phone, yeah. you know, because I'm ready. I, it's, it's time. That's awesome. Thank you, Amy. Thank you so much. And I know yesterday she was like seriously down for the count. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just I'm going to move. Like, texting me like, uh, <laughs> So thank you for being on tonight. And thank you for sharing that story, that story of Jerry and, and what was his wife's name? Gertie? 
I love that. I love that so much. That made me, it made me cry. We, we cried a lot on Monday. Um, yeah, I, really I did better fun. tonight. I did better. Yeah, everybody's kind of gotten themselves together. But like, that, that was so beautiful for me, like to think about that because my husband's my partner for sure, obviously in life, but in my business too. And, and when you are business working together as a couple to make life better for, for each other through the work that you do. I mean, it's, that's really powerful. And, and we're doing that here as compassionate entrepreneurs, just like our artisans are. There's a lot of husband and wife art, artisans out there. Um, so that was a really cool moment that you got to have. So thank you for sharing that. Um, okay, we've got one more. Uh, Tamara, um, bring it home, sister. Ready to hear from you. Okay. Hi. Hey, so I'm Tamara Woodruff, and um, I've been a CE since January of, I don't know, last year, 2016. Um, I'm a master CE, and before I tell you my Haiti story, I'm going to tell you, I feel like you need a little intro to, to Tamara. So um, I, <laughs> I used to be a naval officer, and I said to Aaron, I used to be a badass, like, I used to be a badass. I was a naval officer. I have an undergrad degree in business with a minor in leadership, because that's a thing. Um, I have an MBA that I have never used. Um, so I'm also a Navy spouse, a stay-at-home mom, and I homeschool my three-year-old and my six-year-old. Um, so you, you can probably imagine that um, I, in my day-to-day -day life, do not feel like a rock star. I just, I just don't feel like a rock star. Um, and I don't know about you, but I have had that kind of ick direct sales, like, oh, like Aaron said back at, you know, in, um, that last retreat that we did in power it was like, it, that was that thing that I did, like straight to folk was this thing that I did. Um, so like not rock starring it, but I just went to Haiti last week. Um, and I met these women. I met well, here, I have her picture. Like, I met, I met Samin, who has three kids that she's putting through school. And she's putting those kids through school because of what I do and because of what you do. And I met Verna, who is, like, begging us to do more. She's, I mean, she's got three kids, and she's putting them to school, but she wants to be working full time. She wants to be working six days a week. And, you know... <laughs> And all she wants from us is to sell more, to bring more people on, to do more of what we're doing. Um, I met, you know, we met Monette, who has seven kids that she's putting through school because of the work she's doing at Papillon. So when I start to feel like I'm not really a badass, we have to start thinking about maybe we are. <laughs> so then we went to Haiti Design Co. And at Haiti Design Co., I don't know if you can see this picture because it's going to be backwards, right? Is that backwards? No, it's right. Oh, it is? So this yeah. is the sign that's above the door, Gertie, that we just, that Amy just talked about, leads the team that makes the Revive necklace for us. Um, each of the teams at HDC have a team name and Gertie's team calls himself Fandam. Um, which they very politely told us meant strong woman. And I Google searched it, it actually does come up. That's a legit translation, strong woman. <laughs> um, later on, we got a text message from Aaron, I mean, not Aaron, from Elizabeth, um, who more accurately translated it for us as badass boss lady. <laughs> um, she was talking about a woman, actually I have her picture too, because she inspires me. Um, this is Jolina, um, she's a badass boss lady. <laughs> she is a co-owner of a partisan group that we don't partner with, but we maybe should. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's put a big Take yourself very seriously. She's a fondam, and she's a badass boss lady. But when I think about these ladies and their struggle in life, can I just tell you that there's no limit for them. They are not thinking, oh, I'm just a stay-at-home mom, or I'm just a mom, or I just have three kids that I just have to get through school. They have a job. And that makes them a badass. And because we are giving that, like our partnership is what makes them that kind of woman. They are empowered to have a job, to take care of their families, to send their kids to school because of what you're doing and what I'm doing, what Erin is doing, and people all over the United States are doing for Trades of Hope. And that makes us 
badass boss ladies. So this morning I got up and I put my lipstick on mm -hmm. and I put on a hundred bracelets because <laughs> I'm badass and I'm going to own. It. Yay. That's awesome. That's perfect. Tamara. Um, <laughs> you are completely awesome. And I, I hope nobody's offended by the word ass, but you know what? Shakespeare says it a thousand times. I say it when I taught Shakespeare because it's in Shakespeare's plays, so it's a great word. Um, and it's for real, like, and I love that. Again, like the parallel of, of what we do is so significant and matters so much because of what it does for our partners and that we're awesome. We're awesome because, <laughs> We don't need to make apologies anymore. I heard that at least from five or six of you. Like, I'm going to stop apologizing. Don't apologize for the work that you're doing. It is awesome, amazing, world-changing work. Um, and that's why I wanted you to hear from these ladies because that is, the, that is the theme. That is the message. It matters. It's real. It's awesome. It's badass all day long because it is actually changing people's lives. And it has nothing to do with like this little direct sales business that I do because I'm a stay at home mom. And you know, it is so much more than that. And I hope that, that that message was loud and clear from these ladies. I know that it was because yeah, it's incredible. Um, I, we have just a couple of minutes. Um, if anybody has a question or anything that you want to, uh, you know, throw into the chat, we can, we can, uh, answer questions. Um, while you're thinking of something, I will tell you that, um, just to continue the commercial, the vision trip information for 2018 is actually decided upon and will be released, um, in November. So, you will be hearing very soon about the next round of trips that you can um, go on if that is your desire. Um, and so I hope that, you know, like the lady said, going on a vision trip is, is amazing, but going to a retreat is amazing. And the opportunity to go to retreat is available to anybody who wants to buy a ticket. And, you know, so if you can't get the vision trip to, to become a reality, get yourself to Orlando next August and join us at Inspire. And there will be artisans there and you will have the opportunity. I mean, that's what it was for me at first. I went to a retreat and I, I didn't even hear from an artisan. We didn't have artisans at the very first retreat. We just had people who had gone on vision trips and like you guys and told stories. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, you know, so just to hear that firsthand account, but you guys now actually at retreats get to hear from artisans, which is really amazing. Um, Amber would like to say something. Go for it, Amber. Good evening. How are you? <laughs> Just spill the beans, Erin. Tell us. Oh. Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I really can't, but. Um, I know. I yeah, know. But it's, it's, okay. it, it, it's exciting. And I will tell you that it is different from how things were set up this year. And um, different in that it will give me right. an opportunity to go. Well, I'm excited to find out, but I did want to say to the ladies that I know, Karen um, and Tracy and Missy too, I, I can see their fire and their light. Like there is something that has just like switched in them and their growth and, um, I am really excited to hear what they said and what they shared because I kind of felt like I was there with them. <laughs> so I'm taking these stories and I'm going to be putting them a part of, you know, my presentations. So, and I can say my friend went to Haiti, you know, so this is, this is going to, this is powerful for me too. And um, Karen, you live right around the corner for me. So we are going to get together and have coffee. <laughs> Um, but thank you ladies very much. And I, I felt the heart and I felt the light and I felt the fire and it, it was very inspiring. Well, thank you. Thank you, Amber. And I'm sure, I hope that you, there were about 50 ladies on for this entire call. So I hope that those of you that, that were here live, I'm sure that, that, uh, Amber is echoing your feelings. Um, I mean, it's, it's a gift for me. So I hope that it's been a gift for you guys. I've, I've, like I said, I wrote down tons of notes. Um, 
and I will be re-watching this and I know that lots of people are going to watch this because I'm going to put it on YouTube and so it will bless not only the Great Love Nation but anybody who stumbles across it and wants wants to wants to experience what you experience just a little taste of it um, and and there's more to come I know there's more we're going to be meeting as a, as a team and uh, and I'm just really excited about um, the experience that you just had so yeah good you should want to go to Haiti Angelique uh, it's it's uh, it's I mean you can't help but want to go after hearing that so uh, any other questions I'm looking to scroll back in the feed um, if there's yeah, I, I'm not going to spill the beans. <laughs> all right. Um, there will be more to come, and, and hopefully you caught all these ladies' names, and, and you will uh, know who they are and be able to message them if you have more questions. I'm sure that we will be happy to, to answer them. And I am super excited for the information to come out about the Vision Trips for 2018. And... Um, just excited to see what, you know, this is, like I told them, this is kind of like a, or definitely a new chapter in their businesses. Um, and, you know, the more that we sponsor, that was probably one of my, my favorite things that you said, that every time a new compassion entrepreneur joins us, a new store opens. Her business is a store, you know, and, and where Shelly partners with individual people, you know, in shops and boutiques around the country, when she partners with individual compassion entrepreneurs, you know, just imagine if we doubled. Um, so if every single one of you brought on a new CE this month, um, that would be pretty amazing for our artisans in, in Haiti. So don't apologize for the work that you do. Believe in it. Trust it. You are a BA boss lady and uh, a fond dame. Hey, Erin. Um, yep. Yeah, did somebody want to say something? It, yeah. It's Kelly. I hey, went Kelly. off on, I went offline and I can't get back on. Oh. <laughs> but I forgot to say one thing that I just need to put out in the universe. Okay. And be vulnerable. Okay. So. Um, I talked to a couple of my CE sisters on the trip, and I just want to ask for prayers that, from anybody who will give them that um, I just felt really in my heart that, I mean, I knew before I was called the Trades of Hope, but now I just feel that even more, and I feel like um, I, I do work a full-time job right now, and I just feel like with working a full-time job that I can't do the, all that I'm called to do. I mean, I know we can each um, you know, work our business 30 minutes a day or an hour a day. And, you know, that's what I've been doing. But I just feel now even so much more compelled to want to do more. And so now I'm just praying about um, when that time is and to be able to step out of my comfort zone and just to do that. Well, so. you know, I've got my, you've got my prayers and I love helping people quit their jobs. <laughs> So that they can work trades of hope more. So you've got them, Kelly. And I hope that that resonates with, I know that it will resonate with people that listen to this call too, because it's, people have been able to do it, uh, quit part-time jobs, quit full-time jobs. And um, I, I, you will be prayed for, for sure. So thank you for putting that out into the universe. That's a very important thing. Um, thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. Thank you guys so much. I'm going to stop the recording. Um, so you don't have to disappear, but I am going to stop the recording now. So thank you for, for your time tonight.